Namo Dasa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambudasa Namo Dasa Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namo sadanto suje doye alahadi samyao samputo che. Together, Wu Sang San San Wei Niao Fa, Bai Chen Wan Jian Nan Zhao Yu, Wu Jing Jian Wen De So Chi, Yuan Jie Ru Lai Zhen Shi Yi, The Unsurpassed, Deep, Profound, Subtle, Wonderful Dharma, in a hundred thousand million eons. Is difficult to encounter. Now that I've come to receive and hold it within my sight and hearing, I vow to fathom the thus come ones' true and actual meaning. Good evening, everyone. Uh, tonight we're going to start our lecture on the Avatamsaka Sutra. What we'd like to is invite everyone first to open the front of your sutra or uncover the front of your sutra text. Uh, we're going to recite the name of the sutra, to invoke the names of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, to invite them to come to our assembly and join us. And uh, it's a very simple chant. I think everybody here is an old timer, so it should be no problem. and Bodhisattvas, Venerable Master, all Dharma Masters, and all good and wise risers and friends, welcome to tonight's Sutra Lecture. We're here in Berkeley Buddhist Monastery, and it's January 17th, 2015, just starting out the new year still. And today is our last, uh, you could say the last weekend of the Chan session at the City of 10,000 Buddhas, as well as here in Berkeley Buddhist Monastery. 
We just finished our third Saturday uh, Chan Chan Day here in Berkeley Monastery. So after this week, we'll go back to our normal Saturday schedules with all the Dharma cultivation, uh, the ceremonies, and so forth. So um, today is the the last day of our Chan 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 session. So I know Dharma Master Jing Fu has prepared some Dharma around Chan practice as well as the Avatamsaka Sutra. So we'll have a very rich lecture if for those who are interested in Chan meditation. So we have our text before us, which is the Avatamsaka Sutra. I would like to invite everyone to open the book to page, let's see here, page 2223. Let me move these. So we're on page 22, um, So last week we went over, you could say, the um, the three doors of liberation. Of if people remember, one was emptiness, one was marklessness, one was wishlessness. That was on the previous page and the top of this page. But because we spent so little time on the last one, which was that of wishlessness, um, we were going to go over it, starting go over the sutra text, starting with that passage. Um, so that will be the top of page 22, as well as the top of page 23. So we'll just read that paragraph. Microphone, okay, microphone. Amitabha. Wusujinfo. Wansang kan taja. 一起研究啊，第六地啊，先前地的一些菩萨他所修行所证道的一些法门啊。So my name is uh, Jing Fu, and tonight is my turn to share some Dharma with everybody, so we can investigate the Dharma together. Uh, we're on the sixth ground of the ten grounds in the Avatamsaka Sutra. This ground is named the ground of manifestation. Okay. The first two paragraphs, we'll just recite uh, together the first two paragraphs in the Chinese on page 22. <laughs> 教化众生你有无祥为未满菩提分法令也满故
，言即则转；言不及则不转。我如是知有为法，多知过患。当断此何何因缘，然未成就众生故，也不必敬昧以诸恨，诸恨。好，这样子完。So let's read the English together, starting on page twenty-three. Once he has, in that way, entered emptiness and marklessness, he has no hopes or expectations, except for taking great compassion as foremost to teach and transform sentient beings, and right then the liberation door of wishlessness manifests before him. The Bodhisattva, through that kind of cultivation of the three doors of liberation, becomes free from thoughts of self and others, free from thoughts of doer and receiver, and free from thoughts of existence and non-existence. Disciples of the Buddha, this Bodhisattva Mahasattva's great compassion develops and increases. He diligently practices in order to perfect the Bodhi Share Dharmas, which have not yet been perfected. He makes the following reflection: All that is conditioned evolves through combination. Without combination, there will be no evolution. It evolves through the assembling of conditions. If conditions did not assemble, then it would not evolve. Since I, in this way, know that all conditioned dharmas have many faults and disasters, I should sever that combining of causes and conditions. Never, nonetheless, in order to bring sentient beings to accomplishment, I also will not utterly put a stop to all activities. Ah, three is 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 talking. Ah, there are three kinds of gateways. 就是空解脱门、无相解脱门。那今天又再继续讲无厌解脱门。所以这个是啊，菩萨他所修成的一个啊，现前的一个果地。然后，菩萨他修了这个三种解脱门以后，他就可以离。比我想，比就是他，还有我，然后你做着、受着、想，做着、做着、受着，都是一个体，就是一个啊，什么人就对了。然后你有跟无的一一些想法。So here,、uh, last week we spoke about the three doors of liberation. And so here it begins with the door of emptiness and the door of marklessness, and we're going to be discussing the door of wishlessness. And so here the Bodhisattva, on the ground of manifestation, cultivates this door of wishlessness, as well as the other two doors. And it says here in the sutra text on the the next it, the second sentence here says the Bodhisattva, through that kind of cultivation, the three doors of liberation. Becomes free from thoughts of self and others, free from thoughts of doer and receiver, and free from thoughts of existence and non-existence. Like, ah, this, li and thinking, actually, we in the present day of life, we can use it. We can use it. We can use it. We can use it. 在餐堂上，啊、呃，我们好好打坐，把心就放在这个，啊、呃，你自己所修行的法门
，好像是你啊修打禅的，因为你就啊有很多种你可以去进入，像啊水在念佛啊，你就可以生日，然后就把这个自己的心心，所以这个想啊，就是一个。像里面有一个心，我们就是把心放在这个啊，我们的人的心，把它放在啊，像谁在念佛，就是一直这样子钻进去，这个是一个参禅的一个，一直参下去。那念佛的话，我们就是把我们的佛号放，我们的佛的这个佛号，就是我们的念的这个佛号放在。这个佛自己想的这个佛号上，因为参依照我自己的修行，很多人也都是一样，他参禅跟念佛是没有两样。你可以参禅就是默念，我们把佛号放在这个自己的默念当中，像阿弥陀佛，阿弥陀佛，你可以念阿弥陀佛这样子，自己一直跳。这样子的一个修行法门，所以这个是一个啊、呃、很殊胜的。当然，你其他的你说像念咒啊，念什么也都是一样，就放在咒上。哎，你念经就是要专心念在这个，把心放在这个上面，那就对了。So here we're talking about being free from thoughts. And so, when we say being free of thoughts, this is very much part of the Chan practice. And when we practice Chan, we're、um, trying to, you could say, be free of our thoughts. And there's many different methods of Chan practice. One method、um, that people know about is the investigation of the topic who. So we ask who is mindful of the Buddha. And this word for、uh, Xiang, or thoughts in Chinese. Is actually the word for shang, which is appearance, with a heart radical below it or a mind radical below it. So in our mind, there's just an appearance. That's the、uh, that's the thought you could say in our mind. And so in Chan practice, we're basically drilling into the the mind through, through our thoughts and、uh, going going down into our mind. And so that's one method of of practice, which is Chan. The other is reciting the Buddha's name. And this one is also very wonderful practice method. It's a very, very、uh, wonderful method. And what you do is you always keep your mind, always keep your heart on Amitabha Buddha's name. So in Chan, you can sit there quietly and internally in your in your mind, you recite Namo Amitabha, Namo Amitabha, very very quietly, just in your mind silently, and. Uh, and that way, you can constantly kind of tune yourself, adjust yourself, adjust your recitation so that you're just focused on the recitation.、And、this is also a very wonderful method for cultivation. And so, in this method, Buddha recitation and Chan, you could say they're no different. They're just different ways of of bringing the mind to this kind of focus.、Um, also, you have、uh, mantra recitation or any other Dharma practice similarly. We apply that kind of single-minded effort. Like we know, ah, have have thought, just think. So, in the last time, we talked about that the Buddha, ah, Chan Da, 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 就是，所以他现在我们晚上的的，他证到了这个啊三种以后，他就离开这个想，所以这个是一个很很重要的，就是没有在想，但是也不是说他只是暂时的，不是完全没有，因为后面还是要后面再继续，他是啊在进行休息，后面的一个。So we talk about having thoughts. If one has thoughts, oftentimes we just are false thoughts. We just have a lot of false thinking, 
and this isn't very uh, useful. So last time um, I was speaking here, I mentioned a verse that's on the TM Monastery Wall there in the Chan Hall, and the verse goes that a uh, the second line of the verse goes that yeah I think it's the fourth line of the verse goes um, the cultivator of the way who's free from thoughts draw nears the Buddha, it becomes like the Buddha, and so basically we want to cultivate a mind free of thoughts, but here the Bodhisattva on the sixth ground is uh, basically not completely, uh, you could say, let's go of all thoughts whatsoever. In fact, they still keep some thinking, um, but because he keeps some thinking out of compassion for living beings. So we'll continue to go into that uh, in terms of uh, the sutra text. Uh 想去偷吃那个一个是气死另外一个是人生所以这个想的话其实想起来这个想你修行到一种程度你想的时候这个力量也是它有一种力量然后你知道知道有那种功夫的人他知道他在想什么所以这个是我们特别提出来这个一个想的这个上人他说你既然想要吃人生要吃气死然后你就把他的专利也可以放在这个上面把它真的把它掺出它的味道出来它也是有这样子的大家可以看它的一个说法 So in this uh, editions of Vajra Bodhisi there is a talk by the Venerable Master on Chan practice This talk was given in 1972 and the Venerable Master in it talks about a disciple who wants to has a thought to steal some food to eat. Uh, he wants to eat some cheese, particularly cottage cheese, and some ginseng. And so uh, the rural master mentions it in his lecture. And this kind of idea of thoughts, uh, you, maybe you have a certain amount of skill, you can see other people's thoughts, and you can kind of go into it. And so the rural master points this out about uh, about seeing how this disciple wants to go steal some cottage cheese to eat and some ginseng to eat. So he encourages, okay, you know, even this thought, you can drill into it and, and uh, penetrate into it. So it's another kind of John, a Chan method. So people who are interested, they can go in and look into this uh, article in this edition's VBS. Uh, 就我们在进入在下面的一个就是下面一段就是菩萨摩诃萨他大悲转身紧紧休息所以刚才我就讲说他这个想不是说就就停止这样子他还是有继续在运作他还是要继续用功所以他这个阶段里面就是他从以前的十二因缘一直关到多多十种十种门然后又得到这个解脱然后他就一个力量就是一个他明年送身非常苦的力量他为了要能够解救
，所以他继续能够啊继续修行。So here, the Bodhisattva uh, Morhas Mahasattva says the sutra says that his great compassion develops and increases. So as I mentioned before, the Bodhisattva doesn't stop in his thoughts, doesn't stop altogether. In fact, he continues to cultivate his great compassion um, to rescue living beings. So over this whole sutra, we've seen how the twelve uh, links of dependent origination. Um, are the focus of this particular text, and how the Bodhisattva practices and contemplates them. He used the ten contemplations of the twelve condition, or the twelve links of dependent origination, followed by realizing these three doors of liberation, and then he comes to contemplate the suffering of living beings, so that he wishes to teach them and brings, and has uh, and cultivates his great compassion. Mm. Uh. 每年冬天，我们除了有念佛，就是大部分都是排在啊十二月份念佛，然后有禅期。这个、啊、讲起来是一个修行的一个大考。哎，普通其他像什么啊，观音祭啊，怎么样子？那我们可以把它称为小考。那这个一一直下来，至少有四个礼拜，或者是有时候念佛有两个礼拜，就变成五个礼拜。这个是一个修行的一个大考，你所有的表现这样子，这可以说是一次的考验成绩的一个表现。那这个啊，大考其实。也是真的不容易，不过我们还是每年都要考，因为我们要继续修行，年年难过也是要年年过。So during this time, we just finished、uh, the Buddha retreat and then the Chan session. This time, these four weeks, you could say, is like a big test to see how one's cultivation is doing.、Uh, you take these four weeks, and there's time to vigorously practice. And it's really to get a chance to say, okay, so how am I doing in my cultivation? It's a good reflection on oneself. We also at the Siddha Ten Thousand Buddhas, we have the Guan Yin retreats, and during the Guan Yin retreats, you could say there might be、um, small tests, quizzes. You could call them quizzes. You know, they're not as long and as intensive as the winter time Amitabha and Chan session. Sometimes the Amitabha session is two weeks, so the whole test is for five weeks. So this test is. You can see not an easy test, but still we have to take the test to see how we're doing.、Uh, although it's not easy, it's difficult. Still, every year we take the test to see how the cult of our cultivation is going. Uh, like uh, we in this here, the short term is the same. We uh, last year we mentioned that we have the short term test. 就是一种啊，练金刚身一样，练金刚不坏身。呃，他也这个也是他这他开始的这一期的那个。然后我们这个金刚不坏身呢，就是，因为我们很多事情都是要啊，能够锻炼出来。像他举例说。像有一些去太空，他就也要经过训练，他能够就能够上到上到太空。但是我们休息禅呢，是要是要去太极，所以极就是我们修行的一个重要的。极就是你看来看佛佛者觉也，他是一个觉悟的人，他觉悟就是。明白了，就是这样子，这是我们要修行修行的一个目标。So for the Chan session,、um, same talk by Rumble Master, he talks about how we need to cultivate a Vajra indestructible body, this body of Vajra. And then in the same talk, he talks about how to train this body of Vajra.、Um, it's like people who train to go to outer space. You know, those astronauts. 
they have a lot of rigorous training so that they can go into the outer space and and be able to survive there. So similarly here in the Chan session, one has to train vigorously to not to go to outer space. Uh, and here the Venerable Master kind of makes a pun because in Chinese the word for outer space is Tai Kong, meaning uh, extreme space or extreme emptiness. You know, you go into the, the outer space. So he says it's Tai Jue. You're cultivating so you get Tai Jue, or to be outer awakening or extreme awakening. So the idea is that we're cultivating Chan so that we can wake up. And all the great uh, um, sages and masters, they had to wake up to become um, awakened, to become sages. So that's the Buddha. The Buddha is the awakened one. So um, I thought one thing I wanted to just uh, share with everybody was um, more on the previous passage, uh, which Jing Fosher just went and then connected to, to great compassion, um, which is I thought that one, because for me, reading these ideas of, say, being free from thoughts of self and others, free from thoughts of doer and receiver, and free from thoughts of existence and non-existence, it's kind of like it goes through the mind and it goes out one it goes in one year and it goes out the other year. Okay, got it. Okay, next thing. And um, so it's easy just to kind of gloss over it, I think, uh, at least for myself, because my dualistic mind doesn't really register. Okay, no, 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 no. Does that really make sense? I don't really know. I just kind of go on. And so what I thought um, to do was to maybe unpack that a little bit for people to see if we can relate it to our um, something that we can understand and see. And in particular, what I like about this section is that um, we're talking about the teachings of emptiness, which is really profound. Um, but at this core of this emptiness, we see that there's great compassion. The Bodhisattva doesn't go and, and just enter emptiness. In fact, he says that he still keeps his great compassion and takes that to be number one to rescue living beings. And from there, he's able to enter the door of wishlessness. So this is the, you could say the Mahayana, the kind of the spirit of cultivation for the sake of all living beings and not just going to emptiness and realizing this kind of space of not having any, any expectations, any hopes whatsoever, and just kind of leaving, but rather sticking around to save living beings with that heart of great compassion. And so for me, that's very inspiring because uh, when I first came into the Dharma, it was, I think, the heart of great compassion that moved me and, and inspired me. And the, the teachings on emptiness uh, were very profound, but my mind couldn't really make heads or tails of it most of the time. So the, the heart of great compassion really was inspiring. But I think here in the Sutra text, we can see that both of them are, are in a way put together. And... I thought of a couple ways that maybe we can think about these next three ideas of not having a thought of self and others, being free of thoughts of doer and receiver, and being free of the thoughts of existence and non-existence, uh, using this idea of great compassion as a basis. Um, and so I think one idea about great compassion we often hear, especially here in, um, in DRBA, and if you don't know it, I would really recommend, this is one thing if we want to learn in this particular lecture to, to memorize, is a verse that the Venerable Master gave on great compassion. I'm sure everybody knows it because it's, it's posted in many places. If you go in and make a donation, the receipt has the verse on it, right? The, the verse by the Venerable Master. And it goes, truly recognize our own faults. Don't discuss the faults of others. Others' faults are just my own. Being of one substance with everyone is great compassion. And so the Chinese goes, And so that verse, I think, is a very um, pithy kind of um, nugget of wisdom that, that basically captures the essence of great compassion of this mind that 
uh, is always uh, willing to accept one's faults and see one's faults to improve and grow. Um, not, you know, going out and, and starting discriminating about other people. And then this one about others' faults are just my own, I think, starts getting closer to what we're talking about here. That there is no division of self and other. There's no, you're there, I'm here, and we're kind of split. Because in the heart of great compassion, we're all interconnected. You know, the Bodhisattva doesn't go and rescue living beings because he sees that living beings are separate from him. He says, oh, there, there's a living being there, so I'm going to go rescue that living being. It's completely natural. There's no, you know, no self and other. And here, the next one says, there's no doer and receiver. There's no, you know, somebody who's going to do the helping and somebody who's receiving the help. And, and uh, so I think for me here at Berkeley Monastery, whenever I think of giving, uh, one person always comes to mind which is uh, Nipun Mehta, I think people know him, who started Charity Focus, and now it's called Service Space. Because for me, he's a um, kind of like an exemplar of somebody who gives selflessly all the time. And so I just went to, to look a little bit about what he's been doing, and I saw one talk recently by him um, that he gave at Harker High School. I don't know if people know, there's a high school named Harker, Harker School. And um, I think it's Harker Preparatory School. I, growing up in Saratoga, that was a nearby school, so I definitely knew that. My cousin went there. Uh, it's a very, very good, uh, good preparatory school, very expensive. <laughs> but it's a very good school. And so what happened was that at, the, at their uh, commencement, when they're about all the kids are graduating, um, they did something that was a little bit unique, which was they had the kids vote on or the students uh, vote on who they wanted to choose for their uh, commencement speaker. So who did they end up choosing? They chose Nupun. And so Nupun came and, and, and as usual, uh, was a very um, inspiring speaker. He got a standing ovation, you know, and, and it, was a, it was a very inspired talk. And a couple of things in it really uh, caught my attention because he really, um, when you listen to him, he really makes giving something that just comes directly from your nature. He goes, you know, you just give because that would just make you happy. And it's just something we are all hardwired to feel. And we're all so interconnected. There's no difference. So why not just give? You know, why, why hold it for yourself? It's something that just comes very naturally. So he told a number of stories, which I think um, capture this this spirit um, that shows the kind of the giving heart and how infectious it is. Because for him, truly, he, he really cultivates uh, this, this giving that does not have a doer and a receiver in my mind. He really, in his heart of hearts, is trying to cultivate this unconditional giving. He comes to the monastery every week to, to make an offering to the monastics. And I always feel like his, his gift is always from a place of gratitude, you know. Wow, I'm really grateful I can give to the monastery. It's just um, so deep in him. And so he told a couple of stories. Uh, one uh, was basically uh, he was, uh, I think there was a homeless lady. And so he was giving her, saying, okay, maybe I can buy you a meal. What would you like? And so the lady said, oh, I just would like some ice cream. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll give you some ice cream. So I guess they went to the local 7-Eleven. And, uh, and so he said on the way there, they were talking about giving and things and having a really good talk and really inspiring. And so they got to the 7-Eleven and he got, she got him her some ice cream. And, and so she was so inspired. She says, I got to give you something too. And he, thought, he said, well, you know, she probably wasn't even thinking about, you know, what to, what to do, what she, what she can give. So he says, yeah, I'm going to give you something. He says, oh, yeah, sure. Um, so she went and looked at her pockets See what she had. All she had was a nickel. <laughs> so, so what can you do with a nickel? So she's like, oh, what can I do with a nickel? He says, well, you know, the cashier has been really nice to us. So how about we pay it forward? So how about maybe you just tip the, tip the, tip the uh, cashier at the 7-Eleven? <laughs> she says, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. So <laughs> she gave the nickel to the cashier. And so uh, and then they left the 7-Eleven. Left the and so he said, yeah, that's, this is kind of this kind of, selfless giving. Everybody was very, very happy. You know, everybody was a kind of joyful 
joyful heart. And uh, as I can see that, you know, it's, it's, he has this kind of infectious quality. He always says, when you give, just give it forward. He has these kind of smile cards, which started with us, these kind of ideas of pranks. People always use as, um, especially in colleges, people play pranks on one another. You do these kind of a little bit mean things to each other secretly. And then at the end, you kind of go, aha, you, you kind of f fell for my prank. You know, so he said, well, how about so many people use so much hard work and effort to come up with these pranks? What if you made your prank rather than something mean, something kind? So he said he created this kind of doing these anonymous acts of goodness, acts of kindness. And he created these little smile cards. And so when you receive it, rather than say, uh, take credit for what you did, you just tell people, pass it forward. Give it to somebody else. Pass the kindness onward. And so for him, he's really trying to create a whole another way of seeing um, our lives as people who are basically generous at, at, on our, in our hearts. That's the place that we start from. And, that, um, and to break down the sense of you know, somebody is getting something and somebody is receiving something. It's just an inner connection, that kind of that flow of energy that is part and parcel of our hearts. He quoted this Harvard study, which was actually very interesting, which was basically that what was found was that when people were given this choice of deciding whether or not they were given money and said, would you want to give it away or keep it for yourself? It says, make the decision as fast as possible, as spontaneously as possible. Their first instinct was to give it away. So it was very interesting. And you read the article that's saying how uh, the, the, if we were to mostly go with our intuition before thought starts up, our inclination actually is to give stuff away. But when we start rationalizing and start thinking, we all of a sudden start keeping stuff for ourselves. <laughs> so it's actually a very interesting reflection is that if we could really get to our, our, our kind of our place before all this thoughts and self-calculating comes up, these thoughts of self and others, thoughts of doer and receiver, thoughts of existence and non-existence, we actually are naturally very generous and kind of open and, and kind of spacious. So, um, so those are just a couple of things when I was listening to his talk, I thought that really stuck with me. It's like, wow, you know, that's, that's, that's the heart of giving. I would say that's also the heart of great compassion, of wanting to relieve other suffering and being of benefit. And from that, um, one can really uh, draw near these ideas of this giving, these actions that are free from the thoughts of doer and receiver and free from the thoughts of self and others. Um, here, though, the Bodhisattva enters these thoughts, being free of these thoughts, because he's cultivating to 12 links of dependent origination. And so what I like about the Dharma is that you can come in it in many different ways. So you can come through with this door of great compassion and cultivate this, this kind of caring, giving heart and arrive at this. You can also arrive at this through deep wisdom. And from deep wisdom, you will also enter this kind of great compassion and actually it makes your compassion, your giving, more and more pure, more and more true because it's closer and closer to how things actually are, which the Buddha has been describing or the Bodhisattva Vajra Trinity has been describing on the sixth ground. This Bodhisattva was able to maintain this kind of profound insight into the way things are and how that uh, is able to generate, you could say, uh, true seeing, and by holding on to this great compassion, really be able to give selflessly. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jishi. Jinshansi 
一切都做事情做得很合理的去做，那这个就是慈悲，慈悲再进一步就是大悲。那我我我们啊、呃，去年啊、呃、也讲出来也没关系，就是说有一位法师，他非常精进，他就是在因为。本来身体就不是很好，他就一直要拼，就是啊拼，能够啊精进修行。但是他在佛期的时候，真的就没办法再拼下去了。他还没有没有拼完，大概拼了啊还有几天，然后他气喘不过来，然后。就方丈看了以后，就赶快叫他要啊送医院去。这个啊，其实讲起来，他依照他的个性，他是非常精进的。但是我想，也要看情况，能够拼的时候就拼，不能拼的时候，就是不要一直再拼下去。这样子对。啊，因为讲佛法是长远的路子的，所以在这里提出来，跟大家啊共同参考一下。So this idea of very compassion、uh, is very important. The abbot at the s i t t Thousand Buddha often teaches us to not、uh, to really be to to really be to be compassionate and. By having compassion, then one develops it into great compassion. And when we want to be compassionate, we don't just want to be compassionate to other people; we also want to be compassionate to ourselves. This is a very important point.、Um, we don't want to go to extremes.、Uh, if we do things in a proper, appropriate、uh, way, way, in a middle way, that is, in that way, we are actually being compassionate. And bit by bit, that will grow into great compassion. This is maybe just to tell a story about、um, the middle way.、Um, last year, there was a Dharma master who was a very vigorous cultivator. However, his physical condition isn't the most strong, and so he would really push himself very hard to cultivate vigorously. And during the Amitabha session, however, he in the end couldn't push himself even more to a point that he.、Uh, He couldn't really breathe. He was having difficulty breathing. He only had a couple more days left in the session. And when the abbot saw him, the abbot was very concerned and had to had him go to the hospital to、um, to get、uh, to to get、um, what do you call it treated, so he can recover. So this dharma master's personality is such that he is extremely vigorous. He works very very hard.、Um, but however, we in our cultivation we want to be balanced. We want to Take the long view in our cultivation. This road of cultivation is a long path. We need to look long, and so we apply energy and vigor when it's appropriate to apply energy and vigor. But when we're、uh, our conditions are not quite right, we want to also not push ourselves past an extreme point.、Uh, that's also not such the best practice. So we want to use a long-term vision in our mind to cultivate. 嗯，在看下面的经文的经文的话，就是说他非常精进休息，但是为他精进休息，就是为了还没有圆满他的菩提菩提道。他，但是他又这样子想念，他又这样子在一个念头出来，他他知道说一切有为华，有和合则转。没有和合就不转，所以所谓有有有为法，就是我们世间法，哎，它是不究竟的。那有碰有碰到和合，这个和和合，跟我我跟他解释，和是要跟能够配得来，而且要合理的，然后你就这个转日。就是，就就是能够啊
一个发挥作用。他他碰到事情碰到的时候，他可以给他用心去想过，然后去发生作用，这个转。然后呃，这个讲起来，这个菩这这位菩萨讲起来，他是以。退为进，哎，他不一定，他一定不会说，一定要强求怎样子，强求不就不是道，他不强求，他以稍微能够以退为进的一个方式。So here the sutra text,、um, the next line talks about how the bodhisattva diligently practices in order to protect. The bodhi shared dharmas, which have not yet been perfected, so he is cultivating vigorously the uh, the practices to become the bodhi of、uh, the bodhi shares. Bodhi shares, literally here, is referring to、um, what we've studied in the previous ground, the、uh, fifth ground, I believe, the thirty-seven. Sometimes we translate it as、uh, wings of awakening, or、um, factors for awakening, factors for bodhi. And so, if people remember, in the fifth ground, we went over this the thirty-seven,、um, thirty-seven, this the thirty-seven quite, quite a lot. So here he's diligently practices these so that he can、um, perfect them even more. You know, he can things that are not quite perfect yet. He goes and makes them perfect and complete. So the bodhisattva continues on with a reflection, and that reflection is such. He says. All that is conditioned evolves through combination. Without combination, there would be no evolution.、Um, this word,、uh, you could say,、um, conditioned,、uh, which is in Chinese, is yin yuan. Oh, your wei, your wei fa, wei fa is conditioned dharmas.、Uh, so everything that is conditioned, meaning like the worldly dharmas, everything in the world is is based on conditions, and so. They evolve through combination, so the combination is translating the word in Chinese "he he." And here,、um, when I explain maybe how to explain "he he," it's something that is.、Uh, there's a match. There's a there's a combination there. They click, and there's a principle that guides it. It's not just、uh, there's something that connects, and so a little bit tricky. The word combination. Does anybody have another maybe another word for "ha ha"? How would you translate it? Anybody who's Chinese speakers, how would you translate "ha ha"? Compound, all compounds, maybe compounds. Yeah, that's an、uh, combination. I think is a hard to think about. So evolves through combination or through compounding. Basically, I think it's right. It's the things coming together. These conditions before the twelve. Conditions of dependent origination, they come together, so then things start happening when these come together, right? That was my own comment. Not Jane Fortier's comment. So he he here refer to the back of Yuan Qi because the power structure. Okay, Yuan Qi. Yuan Qi meaning the twelve condition links. 对，这个是下面一句。Yeah. So okay. So it, it it connects with I think the twelve twelve condition links particularly, and so so this is the、um, the when we say combinations here, you maybe think think of the combinations of the twelve condition links. These conditions come together, and then something can happen. And so here the word comes as translated as evolves. The literal translation of the word zuan is transformation or turning. Something turns. Something happens. You could say. All that is conditioned,、uh, something happens through combination. You know, a reaction happens. So the evolves here isn't quite like a evolution of like you know how we usually think of evolution.、Uh, you know, a monkey becoming like a human. You know, and such and such and such. This is not the same evolution. Evolution here is the idea that things are growing or transforming. There, something's happening, and so. So here,、uh, the bodhisattva is、uh, cultivating, and you could say that the bodhisattva takes retreat.、Um, you could say taking a step back as 
moving forward. Uh, this is a concept in Buddhism that basically sometimes we need to take a step back. And that's really actually making us taking a step forward in our cultivation. Because the Bodhisattva is not forcing anything. He is not going and trying to push something and get something to happen. Ango 就是这也是一种慈悲心也他也非常知道这个我讲的就是他有这种的一个慈悲心的这也是一种慈悲心的一个方式去度人家。And so the Bodhisattva, as you said, makes that following reflection about how without the right combination, there is no evolution, there is no transformation. And so when I said that the Bodhisattva takes a step back sometimes as a step forward, as progress, uh, you have to see also the next line, the next contemplation, which says, um, it revolves through the assembling of conditions. If conditions did not assemble, then it would not evolve. So the Bodhisattva, you could say, waits for the right conditions for something to transform. He doesn't push something. So that's what is meant, is that he's not uh, forcing things. He's just waiting for the conditions to arise. And then the sutra text continues, saying, Since I in this way know that all conditioned dharmas have many faults and disasters, I should sever that c combining of causes and conditions. Nonetheless, in order to bring sentient beings to accomplishment, I also will not utterly put a stop to all activities. So the Bodhisattva here is able to stop the 12 condition links. However, uh, he doesn't stop it, all activities entirely, because he wants to rescue living beings. This is a manifestation of his great compassion. And he also knows how to teach living beings at the right time. He knows how to use the cause and conditions just right so he can save living beings at the appropriate time. Mm -hmm. like, uh, 因缘记住是非常重要有因缘构成然后不强求像我们知道佛有三种人他是不能度的第一个就是说不能够他这个定业已经定了 另外一个人无言，所以无言就是他也不强求，没有这种缘分，他也不去度。第三个就是说，他也提到他不度尽众生，不把众生没有办法度尽一切所有众生。但是我们啊，我们啊，菩萨。
菩萨呃无无无量誓愿度，所以这个就是我们发啊菩萨心。那这在这里的菩萨也是一样的，但是也是最重要，也是要看因缘。所以他因缘不合，他暂时不度，他不是说不度，暂时不度的。然后啊、呃，因为你。一一一直强求，那就不是道，就就不是啊佛法，所以这个是很重要的一点。第三个因为不不度是，不是一切众生，不不是，也不能度尽众生界，就是一切的众生界，他没有办法，不不没有办法度尽一切众生界，三三个不。啊，是个因缘啊，那个是终身因缘，所以他们，对呀、啊，啊，就是他不度的三种，三三个情况。Okay, um, maybe some, the Chinese speaker is going to help me with the third factor when we I get to it, because I didn't quite understand it. So here in causes and conditions, um, uh, the Bodhisattva waits for when the causes and conditions are ripe. And and ready, so then he's able to,、um, you could say, accord with it and and use it so that there's a transformation, there's some ev evolution. You could say the living being evolves, right? He grows spiritually, evolves spiritually. He doesn't force things. He doesn't、um, try to force the conditions to be a certain way based on what he wants. Rather, he he naturally allows things to happen.、Um, so the Bo there's in Buddhism says that the Buddha. There's three types of people, or three types of living beings, that he doesn't、uh, rescue at the time because the causes and conditions aren't quite right. One is that living beings have fixed karma. The living beings that fixed karma, they're not. It's not the right time to rescue them, so he doesn't go and rescue them. Another one is the second one is that those he has no affinity with. Then it's the conditions are also not quite right to rescue those living beings either. The third one, I didn't quite understand what the Chinese Chinese was. It says he's not able to save all living beings. Therefore, that's another category. That's a category. Okay, so so there's another category which is not all living beings can be saved. So there's a I guess some living beings that are unsavable at that moment as well. That seems to be a kind of a pretty big basket. <laughs> But、um, so those are those conditions are what the Bo Buddha says. These three conditions, if these three conditions are like this, then he doesn't force it. He he doesn't force it. However, in the Bodhisattva's vows that we recite every day,、um, one of the vows says that living beings are infinite. Yet I vow to save them all. So we still have that vow to rescue all living beings, and so. Um, the Bodhisattva looks carefully at the causes and conditions, and so he sees maybe this living being at this time, the causes and conditions aren't right to rescue them, or aren't right to help. It's not the right time to help them, and so it doesn't mean he doesn't save them. But at this point, he doesn't go and rescue them because the conditions aren't right. He doesn't force it. He and when you try to force something, it's really not the way. It goes against the Dharma. You know when we try to force something. Uh, when the causes and conditions are the right time, then that's the time that something can can work. Okay, 像在这这段的经文当中，也菩萨他自己做很适当的一个调试，然后也他也啊知道进跟退，然后他也。去尽他的人事，去很慈悲的去救度众生的一个表现，所以啊啊，菩萨跟我们凡夫是不一样，他发大心，他就是以天下的啊苍生为主，就像我们啊啊，在中国历史上。有一个很有名的一个公案啊，就是你知道诸葛亮，他
啊，被请下山，然后被刘备去啊去请了三次才下山。他这个就是啊，刚刚开始呃，这个讲起来故事蛮长的，我们啊可以稍微缩短，就是说他这个下山的目的。是，呃，刘备跟跪在那里第三次的时候，跪在那里跟他叩头，然后他最后讲了：“那天你不不下山，你不为所有的苍生，那所有的苍生要怎么办呢、啊？”就是这个，他听到这个。所有的苍生要怎么办？哎，所以他就决定就去扶助这个啊刘备。所以这个是因为讲起来，大家可以去翻一翻这个历史。这个是一个有一个他为了苍生，他不是为了他自己，而且他在啊。就是在呃，卧龙岗，就是在那个卧龙山那里，他那里，他待了二十七年，他都没有下山，哎，最后是有人跟他推荐，他去请了三次，然后才下山的，所以这个啊，我们啊。第六地的菩萨也是一样的，他是为众生在啊救度众生，他并不是完全为自己的一个设想。长生就是所有的和长生，意思就是所有的众生一样，可以讲众生啊，嗯，一切的众生，嗯。So the Bodhisattva teaches with a very appropriate teaching method. He knows uh, uh, exactly how to teach the living being. He knows when to um, take a step back. He also knows when to move forward. The Bodhisattva's heart is very great. It's very expansive and includes all living beings. He's not like us, us ordinary living beings, who often don't have this kind of expansive heart. The Bodhisattva takes living beings as priority number one. There was a story that's very famous in Chinese history about a general named uh, Zhuge Liang. Uh, he's a very famous uh, figure, and um, he was to be um, invited to serve one of the emperors named or uh, the kings. Yeah, I think he was during the Three Kingdom period in in uh, China, and one of the uh, You could say the rulers of one of the kingdoms, named Liu Bei,、uh, had to invite him three times before he would come down the mountain to serve. And the story is a very long story, so I'll be just be just tell the essence of it. But basically, at the final time, the third time, this、uh, ruler uh, requested Zhuge Liang to come and help help him. Was he kneeled there and he said. You know, if you don't come to help, then what will all the living beings here under under heaven? You know, all living beings. What will we do? What will we do? You have to come and help. And so, finally, hearing this, Zhuge Liang thought, okay, he would come down. And so he came to serve, not for his own sake, not for his own benefit, but for other living beings. And so he、um, stayed on this mountain that before he was invited down. It's called、uh, Ola Ola Mountain, Mount Ola, and he stayed there for 27 years and did not come down. So only after he was requested three times did he come down from the mountain. So he、uh, came down, you could say, at the at this the the kind of the appropriate time、um, to to come down. He didn't wasn't forcing conditions. And he's just like this sixth grade bodhisattva, who's not doing things based on for himself, but basing it on all living beings. Okay. 
菩萨，第六地菩萨，从啊，初地，呃，欢喜地，第二地，呃，离垢地，第三，呃，发光地，第四，烟灰地，第五，呃，男生地，第五，现前，呃，第六，第五是男生地，第六是现前地。所以他一直修行过来，这个都都是在讲啊，夺、呃、恨。我们讲夺恨辅人是最重要的，以夺辅人。哎，不是说啊、呃，我势力很强去辅人，或者我有命令也可以辅人，或者是。我可以有教导人，这个都不是以多福人最重要。那我们今天就是学习啊，菩萨精神，最我们最重要就是要学习他的德行。福福人呢、啊，就是给人家配合来调，能够啊，给人家福气啊。So here, uh, the Bodhisattva is cultivating on all the different grounds, from the first first ground, which is the ground of happiness, uh, to the second ground, which is the ground of leaving defilement behind, to the third ground. Uh, third ground is blazing wisdom, or that fourth? Third is Fagong. The third is uh, that of emitting light. We translate translate emitting light is um, shining light. The fourth ground is that of blazing, blazing wisdom, right? Yeah. yeah, blazing wisdom. The fifth ground is the ground of difficult conquest. Um, you could say uh, difficult conquest. I'm not sure how it was translated before, but literally translates difficult conquest. And now we're on the sixth ground, which is the ground of manifestation. So here, the Bodhisattva, over all this time, when he cultivates, he uses virtue as his way of subduing living beings. He doesn't use his power. He doesn't use his influence. He doesn't. He doesn't oppress living beings, but he uses virtue as a way to teach and transform living beings. So this is something we all should learn from the Bodhisattva, that of cultivating our virtue, and from there we can truly be able to help and 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 teach living beings. Hmm. 还有我们。今天晚上也提到无怨无求，哎，假设一个人呢、啊、能够做到无怨无求，这个是非常不错的，因为我们啊、呃，一般凡夫都是有怨有求，像当然像我们啊、呃、求。啊，发愿往生西方，然后求生净土，这个都是我们啊常常这样这样子在在做。但是我们有发愿完了以后，我们就不必要再挂在心里面。所以这个是我们啊要注意，因为我们也常常在做回向啊这些的，所以啊。真的，一一个人修行能够做到无怨无求，品质高啊，他的品品德是非常高的。那讲起来，啊、呃，就是呃，像菩萨，他当然他已经修行，要接近去佛的那边的佛的境界，所以他志也高，所以。自高行也高，他的修行也是很高。那能够做到真的无怨无求，是啊、呃，他一个非常就等于刚就讲的是一种解脱，哎、欸，就不再有挂心，这个最最重要。就像我们现在马上要九点，就到九点，我要上。
讲完了，就是一种解脱，因为你没有在挂心在那里了，所以这算一种解脱。因为我以前常常请人家上台讲法，请了好几年，每次他讲完以后，他就非常高兴，然后我已经解脱了，就是跟大家分享一下。So tonight we talked about how the Bodhisattva has this lib enters the liberation door of wishlessness. He has no nothing, no craving, nothing he seeks, no desires, nothing he seeks after. This is really a lofty, uh, you could say, a um, accomplished state. Uh, us ordinary living beings aren't don't have this state. We're always craving after something, desiring something, or seeking something. Uh, so, for instance, in cultivation, and especially in the Pure Land practice, we make vows to go be reborn in the West, in the Amitabha's Pure Land, and we seek to be reborn there. And so we're seeking. However, um, when we cultivate, we make this vow, but we don't want to hold on to it in our heart all the time. We make the vow, and then we don't attach to it. We start cultivating, and we transfer to it, but we don't think about it all the time. Uh, we we make the vow and then we cultivate according to it and don't don't just keep dwelling on the on the atta on the vow. Um, so we just cultivate. So this is an important principle. If we can truly cultivate um, ourselves, then we can and become like that. Become without a desire and craving, and without seeking, then we can um, really improve and grow, and our character will become very lofty and refined. Um, so in cultivation, um, the Bodhisattva has been cultivating, and bit by bit, he's growing nearer and closer to the Buddha. You could say his resolve or his um, his determination is very lofty and and uh, and high, and so his cultivation accordingly is also very at a very high level, as a very vigorous level, and so um, so now the time is almost at nine o'clock, and so. Uh, you could say it's uh, it's a little bit like liberation for me. I had to plan out. Uh, I had to help organize many of the Dharma talks at CTTB by inviting people up to the stage to share their Dharma experiences in the sessions before it was at CTTB. And always the people would go up and share their experiences, and at the end of their sharing, they always feel like they've been liberated. So I have a similar experience. So uh, so yeah. Uh, so now it's uh, we have maybe a couple more minutes and so if you have any feedback or comments or thoughts or any experiences that you would like to share um, you're welcome to to come share uh, this is a very or you can say unique opportunity if anybody has anything they would like to to share. Share. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He's asking if Mark wanted to share something. You want to or <laughs> you can try. Okay, go for it. Yeah. You wanna sit up here? So the video or I guess the video could turn around. They can get get, get you. Thank you, sit over here. So Mark has been very vigorous cultivating the Chan session here. I think people know that Mark is now a trainee, meaning he took the eight precepts and is uh, on the way to training to become a novice monk and then and next to become ordained to be a fully ordained monk. So he's in the training process. So he's living here in the monastery with the rest of us here. Okay. Yeah. 
coming. Okay. Uh, Dharma Masters, Venerable Master, uh, all friends. Uh, today in the evening, the Dharma Master Jean Fosher asked me to share some <laughs> experience, and for me it was wow. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I don't want it, to do it, and I think oh, it's kind of resistance come to my mind, and. And I consider, and I go to my room, <laughs> and I think, okay, uh, this is some show up in my mind, and what is important also in this chant for me and is is patience, you know, also <laughs> with the patience with this uncomfortable uh, situation like here, like now, because you know it's talking to you with. In English, is still for me some kind of challenge. <laughs> In Polish, probably also, but it's a little bit easier, I guess. And and what I can hear, uh, I think develop and really learn. And it's it's just patience. And uh, when we sit here hour by hour, and of course many state might arise a lot of pain also and i struggle with pain of many many years and before i try to do create some strategy how i can you know uh, subdue this pain how i can get rid of this pain and never uh, successful <laughs> and always when I something expected it was total different and of course it was the cause a lot of disappointment for me and oh I failed you know I feel really bad it's because I have a lot of pain it's cause I don't have any samadhi of course <laughs> and, and uh, but I also recognize I uh, during this this chant session also I heard mm, a lot of dhamma talks, especially the Marty talks, and not exact, not only, and one really good uh, explanation, patience uh, was really useful for me. That is, patience is not mm, not mm, depend of of time, on sense of time, and it was really useful for me because really often if you see this uncomfortable uh, moment, you really often, I have, I had this tendency to watch the clock, <laughs> how, <laughs> how more I can, when it's finished, you know, and, and that is, when I recognize, and also I try to do it, and to, to see how it's work, to see without time, okay, is let it be, this pain is just sense, is pain. <laughs> and what I can be related to him, uh, how I can stay with. And, and it was really when I tried to don't thinking about time, it was really help to me and really uh, give me some mm, some s some stay some stable state and uh, and I remember also the uh, from the uh, forest sangha mm, teaching and uh, uh, Lumpo Cha said that the in this monastery, what Papang is not most important to be happy, but to be patient with the changes, <laughs> and and I, I guess the the patience. It's still, uh, I think, it's super important to to me not only on during the chan, but also in my process when I an uh, trainee or anagarika, and also in the forest tradition, one uh, monk Ajahn Suchito. Mm, said that in for example Tibetan tradition it's the beginning 
cultivation called the Nidro, and you should do 100,000 prostrations. And he said, if you become an Agarika, you have similar state, you have 100,000 frustrations. <laughs> and, and because, you know, you, you should still keep your precept, and this precept gives you a kind, kind of limitation, and a lot of habitual ener energy uh, show up, and and it's sometimes painful, and I think patience is super helpful. And of course, here is not too much, maybe difficult, like what Papa, uh, what we like the Ajahn Monast uh, Cha Monastery, when he was really proud that his food was the, the worst in the world. <laughs> we, we have the different uh, patience, uh, but still, it's, it's kind of challenge for me. And so it's nine o'clock and <laughs> uh, thank you, you for your patience <laughs> and, you and, uh, and uh, i hope so it's uh, <laughs> what was something useful for you <laughs> this talk thank you okay so any other um questions or comments uh we you have a question for him no. oh Okay, um, we have a transference coming up, but first, um, just a couple of announcements. We are not quite started the university semester yet here down in Berkeley, but following week we will. Uh, so January 20, after the week of January 26th, all our normal classes will start up again. The Monday night um, Buddhism for the Modern Mind, the uh, Intro to Buddhism and Meditation class, the uh, Friday night Six Patriarch class, with Dr. Verhoeven, um, and so those will all be starting up again. So people are welcome to participate. We put up a flyer of the classes so you can take a look and see what's happening. And there's also one to make a kind of a special announcement in case people are interested. Uh, we've um, communicated with Dharma Master Chur to teach a class here in Berkeley. It's like, oh, wow, Dharma Master Chur, isn't she in Australia? True, she's in Australia. So what we're hoping to do is actually have her teach from Australia here in Berkeley through the internet uh, and make it an actual kind of a class environment. So this is not a class that we're um, kind of just making like a live broadcast to the, the general public. It's something. So those online, sorry. But uh, maybe you can come to Berkeley and join us here in the monastery. And the idea is that here at Berkeley Monastery, as well as the Siddha Thousand Buddhas, will actually create a kind of a classroom environment where um, she can teach, and we can uh, uh, learn from learn from her. and And the theme of it, what? Is it? Okay, so Jing Hushers wanted to mention if other branch monasteries of DRBA have a lot of strong interest in wanting to to uh, do a class with Dharma Sutra. We can also try to set it up through through them, them as well. So the idea was to create something that was in the in the monastery, so that we kind of create an environment of study, uh, that kind of a, a, a tradition, rather than just you know you're in front of your computer and you got the Dharma talk on, and you got your email over here, and you kind of you know. <laughs> so and, and then the idea is to actually have a class, so we're gonna have like people study together. And so the theme of it was actually came from the idea of looking into our daily ceremonies. I think I know a lot of people have been doing our daily ceremonies for many, many years, and we go, what does it actually mean? What are we doing all these things? And, uh, and so the idea is to ask her, because she has a lot of experience, to, um, to explain what the daily ceremonies are about. And so the, f the first thing she chose was to explain the Amitabha Sutra. So she was going to use a translation of Great Master O.E.'s commentary to the Amitabha Sutra, which is very well respected in the in the in the Tripitaka. He's considered the ninth patriarch of the Pure Land School. And what's really interesting about the text is he really connects it with the consciousness only teachings of Buddhism. It's like the you can say a little bit like mind ground teachings of the Pure Land. And so if you're interested, we have a poster on the wall. It's gonna be from on Thursday afternoons from three to five PM. So we'll be having it here in the monastery in Berkeley. Uh, or if you're at the Siddha Thousand Buddhas, we have it also in the Siddha Thousand Buddhas. 
So, um, so yep. So that's yes. So working people could have uh, a chance to participate. Be greatly compassionate. Um, okay, I, I mean, I can mention it and see what will happen. Right now, though, since the semester is started, Saturday afternoon. Okay, we can, I, I can I'll, it's true, we haven't, we haven't really considered the, uh, Maybe we can set up another session as a group together from on Sundays or something. So we will we'll have a recording of it, and uh, we haven't really thought about how to to figure out all the various logistics. But um, but maybe we can do another showing of it here in the monastery on the weekend for people to to study together. So okay, we'll we'll think about it. So yeah, any any feedback? Let us know, and we can improve. Okay. So if there's nothing else. We can do our transference of merit. It's on the back of your Dharma request sheet. So now um, there's a chance for you to practice great compassion and share all the uh, goodness from our listening to the Dharma and reflecting on some principles of, of uh, compassion and wisdom to all living beings or whoever you choose to share it with. Stand up slowly if your legs are asleep.